Hello friends, my name is Nathan, but you don't have to remember it because I'm not going to tell you so much about myself as I am about the people, or rather the things that have told me about their owners. It's interesting and even a little creepy, but don't be afraid, it won't hurt, I promise. I have a gift, though I'm not sure if it's my curse anymore. My brother and I inherited it from my father, but my dad's long gone, and I lost my brother not that long ago, so I had to work at the firm by myself. I'm not a normal kid. I've been diagnosed with lingering deep depression. I'm a sociopath, and I can't and don't like interacting with people. I've always been that way. It's much easier to communicate with objects. They will tell you much more than people and won't make things up. But I learned how to read the information at an early age. The three of us worked together. Even though I was just three years old, I helped my father and brother. We were very good at cleaning abandoned houses and we were paid by the owners, old or new. The houses were prepared for sale or purchase. There were all sorts of things. Our team did it better than anyone else and all because the things themselves told us where everything was. Because of this, the work went quickly and smoothly. In the history of my work, I remember a couple of interesting cases. They were quite brutal. Just about them, I'm going to tell you. We received a call on a Sunday morning and were asked to come in at three times the rate. My brother agreed right away. He said that since my father's death, our business had declined a bit and we had to cover expenses and pay full taxes. We drove out to the place. Some guy met us there. He was the same age as my brother. He said we'd had two hours to clean the house before his parents arrived. What's the rush? Is there something in there? Well, you know, it's very dirty. The apartment has been empty for months. I thought my parents weren't going to move in yet, but they're planning on renting it out. I want a couple of hours to clean it up. We went inside and my brother caught his breath. What are those? Cats? Yeah, cats, or rather, what's left of them? Why are they here and why is there skin on the walls? I was stoned yesterday, okay? I don't want to remember what happened here. I'm just asking you to clean it up. I'm afraid we can't. I'm sorry. I'll pay for it. I have money. That's not the point. You killed innocent animals when you were high. We don't need a clinic. We need the police or an asylum. What did you say? I'm going to sue you. I'll run a black ad about you. How dare you say no to me? What difference does it make what kind of shit to scrub off the walls? It does. I don't work with murderers. That guy was so freaked out, but only I knew how my brother felt, because I felt the same way. That picture, all her pain and fear was transmitted to us. I could hear with every fibre of my body the walls of this house screaming and writhing in terror. This guy doesn't know yet that his father had done worse things in this house, and he wasn't doing it to cats. He was doing it to children, other people's children. The blood on the walls could only be seen through ultraviolet light. We saw pieces of torn shoelaces in the corner of the room, someone's bracelet, and there were baby handkerchiefs hidden between the cushions on the couch. We saw all this in a couple of minutes while we were there, so we ran away from there quick. Ten minutes later, when we drove away, my brother called the police and dictated the address. I supported his opinion because I would have done the same thing in his place, but it cost him his life later. That kid's father found us. He'd already been charged with paedophilia, about to go to jail, and his last hours, instead of spending them saying goodbye to his family or looking for a lawyer, he came to us and strangled my brother. At this time, I was asleep in my room. I only fell asleep on tranquilizers due to restless sleep. That's why I didn't hear anything. A month later, I renewed my online ad for services. I immediately received a message about the offer. The price, address and time frame were all listed. I gathered what I needed and went to the site. I was met by a whole family, a man, woman, three children my age and an old grandmother. She told me it was her house once and her children want to make repairs there to save a place for future gatherings. My husband and I lived in that house for many years. I want to keep the memory of it alive. We were lucky to have such good children. They take such good care of me. They come to the nursing home every month. Would loving people send their mum to a nursing home? This grandmother pretended not to hear me. I was shooed away by a man. Apparently it was her son. Mum, don't worry, we'll keep the house. He's just finishing cleaning it up. At this time, I had already had time to mess with some things. An old, collapsed chair, books, shelves. I went over to the mirror and saw a lot of stories going on in this house. What was your husband's name, Cal? How do you know? Do you know us? Your husband had an amputated leg from the war. He used to drink black coffee with two spoonfuls of sugar, no milk, from this mug. And this is the mirror you used to look in every morning with him, and he used to brush your hair. The grandma cried. 
What the hell are you talking about? You made her cry. Do the job or get out. Shut up, Ted. Leave us alone. But, Mum... I said leave us alone. They all walked out. After making sure they weren't around, the old lady came over to me and we sat down on the couch. You must have some kind of gift. No one knew that my cow was combing my hair. It was our secret. Tell me, my boy, are my children... Are they looking for something in this house? Yes. Did they lie to me? Yes, ma'am. They won't keep it. Your sister-in-law has already found a client to sell the land to, and your son. He's a bastard, I know. He's looking for the gold that Cal hid in the walls of this house. I know it's still there, but I don't want to give it to them. They put me in a nursing home hoping I'd die quickly. I want to do a little trick for them afterwards. I have a favour to ask of you. You know what I mean? Yes, I'm going to give this gold to your adopted daughter, Anne. I already know. Where does she live? Does she come here? Every month on Mondays. That's the day I adopted her. Monday. Grandmother bitterly regretted that she didn't love her in her own right, and she cried about it. She knows you loved her. This is why she comes. Your son forbade her to visit you in the nursing home. He even bribed the staff. That son of a bitch. I'll do it for you. God sent me you. You'll make the case I started and absolved me of my sins. Son, may your life be beautiful. Thank you for everything, son. I cleaned the house as we agreed. I found the gold quickly and easily, wrapped it in my toolbox, and handed the job over clean. The man freaked out that there was nothing there. They left. Another Monday, I went there and told the woman everything and handed over the gold. She cried bitterly. Then she asked me to do her a favour as well. She wanted to get her mother out of the nursing home and out of there. I came to my grandmother the very next day in the guise of a letter carrier. I personally handed her a supposedly special letter which said that my grandmother had to leave the premises, but the nanny wouldn't let me in. I had no choice but to distract her. I took a pen from her pocket and began to tell her about the illegal documents she was signing, that she was stealing food from the warehouse and selling it at the market, that she was slipping sleeping pills to the old people at night so that her shift would pass quickly. She looked at me with horror and asked who I was. I'm the mailman today and if you don't want to be a prisoner, let her out of here. And she did as I said. The foster daughter took that grandma away from there, and the nanny made out a pass and handed over all the proper paperwork. I completed my mission, and my brother smiled at me. I could see it in the reflection of his wristwatch that I wore. You did the right thing, little brother. It's as if he was telling me, standing quite close by, but he wasn't. Otherwise, my work was no different than just cleaning. Sometimes I changed people's fates. Sometimes I didn't want to know, but I couldn't. It just happened on its own. My lonely and identical life consisted only of memories. After my father and brother died, I didn't throw away their things. They reminded me of this or that every time. That way I wasn't too lonely. So if you need my services, give me a call. And if you're afraid, you'd better get out on your own. Although who knows, I might as well have been in your house, right? Hello everyone, my name is Layla. I have a very ordinary house, or rather, not at all ordinary. As I begin to tell my story, I would be very interested to know from you, your friends, where you live and where you would like to. I will tell you about my old and new home, and the most important thing that I realized is the value of what we have. In general, watch, listen, do not forget to like the video, and subscribe to the channel. I promise you'll be surprised. My mom and dad and I used to live in a small house in one of the provincial towns. Everything was like everyone else. My parents worked, my earnings were small, and I was very angry about it. Yes, I did not like my house because it was not as big and beautiful as some people's. We did not have a car, a dog, and in general, we had to save a lot of money. As my father said, there is no stable income in our family. Because my father worked wherever he had to, and my mother was a waitress, then a cleaner, then something else. I knew they were doing everything they could, but I wanted better conditions. I remember one night, I didn't want to go to bed because I was disgusted with my bed. We slept on the floor, on mattresses, and we had only one room. I was very angry at something or someone. My mother asked me what I wanted, and I told her so viciously that I wanted to get out of our house. She tried to calm me down, but I didn't want to. The anger only grew. My mother scolded me because of my behavior. Then my father got involved and they had a quarrel. They swore so loudly that I covered my ears. And then my father left. He couldn't stand the way we fought and left, finding it easier to pull out. My mother was crying bitterly, and so was I. 
The next day, the landlady came to us. She asked for rent money, but we had none. My mother talked to her for a long time about something, but the hostess was very angry. She collected our things and put them out on the street. My mother and I were left without a roof over our heads. It rained hard that night, and I was so cold that I asked my mother to go back to the flat, and she told me we couldn't. At that moment, I wished I hadn't said I wanted to get out of there the night before. We wandered around the city for a long time with our things in our hands. I kept asking where my father was, but my mother blurted out that she didn't want to see him ever again. I hated him for leaving us at such a moment. I promised myself that when I grew up, I would find him and tell him what I thought about him to his face. We were outside for a few hours, and then my mom took my hand and we walked into a building. I didn't know where it was. It looked like a house on the outside and offices on the inside. Only then did I realize that this was where my mother worked, where she washed the floors. She somehow went through security there and we ran into the toilet. It was warm and dry, just the thing. My mother locked the toilet door and spread out the bags and blanket we had with us on the floor. She sat down there and took me in her arms, covering me with her jacket. I remember how hungry I was. I asked my mother to get food, but she just cried. Out of frustration, I fell asleep on her shoulder. I don't know how long we slept, but we were awakened by a knock on the door. Mom quickly picked me up, packed our things, and hid me in the toilet stall. Where I sat on the toilet, sleepy and still hungry, someone came in, my mother greeted her, and said that she was cleaning up. Then she shooed the woman out, closed the door again, and let me out. We had to leave everything in the storage room next to the toilet. Mom cleaned up quickly, and then I went down the street with her. She bought me a bun and tea, and she only got to drink water. Then we went back to the toilet, and my mother put me back on the toilet and asked me to sit quietly. I sat there alone for a long time. I was bored and scared. I did not know where my mother was and when she would come back. Some people came in, pulled the handle, and I sat and was silent. My mother wrote a sign, not working, so that no one would scare me anymore. I thought mom was going to come back and we were going to look for a house, but that didn't happen. My mother would come to me during breaks and then go on to work. Day after day, we lived like this, sleeping on the toilet floor, and then I waited for my mother all day, sitting in the stall. My mother gave me a coloring book, a book and pencils, made a kind of table, and the toilet served as a chair. And so I sat all day, drawing and looking at pictures. I asked my mother how long we would still live in the toilet, but my mother sadly replied that she did not know yet. I could hear a different woman talking. The sounds of them going to the bathroom, someone smoking, and the smell of cigarettes stung my nose, and I wanted to cough, but I held back, and once I couldn't, and coughed. The woman was very scared. She asked, who's there? But I was quiet again. I was afraid that they would find me and throw me out. That woman climbed on the toilet and looked at me from above, and what she saw shocked her. She opened the door and pulled me out, asking where my mother was and what my name was. I told her like it was, I was still scared. At that moment, another woman came in. It was the director of the company. As it turned out, she was like, whose baby is this and what is she doing here? And then she saw our stuff. She immediately called my mom and they had a long conversation. That woman was screaming violently, saying that this was unacceptable. Then she kicked us out on the street and my mother got fired from work. My mother was very upset. She packed our things, took me, and left the building. We were again without a home. But you know, I'm even used to living in the toilet. It's better than the cold street. By the way, the weather then turned bad.